Welcome to part two with A. Halwa, the author of Secrets of Divine Love. I have already uh, published her uh, part one last week. If you have heard about it or uh, listened to it, uh, please let me know uh, what you think of it. And if you haven't, uh, either way, you can start with part two today and go back to part one or start with part one and come back to part two. So um, you can also visit my website, lightupichwa.com and let me know what you think of the podcast and these conversations. So enjoy this amazing conversation with A. Halwa. Thank you. I just wanted to know, is, is, is there, um, like how long did it take for you to reach these, this clarity that you have today? Um, I know everybody's unique and everybody has their own journey, but uh, is there uh, a way for a young person to reach to a place where they are not totally confused and can hold on to what you held on to and reached where you are? Is there a formula? Is there a twi- quick tip or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I feel like part of it for me is like knowing that I haven't reached anything and mm. it sounds um, mm. sort of weird, but it's like mm-hmm. when I feel like, like I, I'll be, I'll actually be very honest is when, when the book really began to become real for me was when I really, really, really um, allowed myself to take in how incapable I am. Mm. Mm. And it's not incapable in a way that says I'm not good or, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just like I'm just aware of my inability. Like I'm, I. If someone asks, "Are you a writer?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> you know, right, right. Inclination right. because I write poetry. It's very short form, it's mm-hmm. like a page, three pages max. You know, mm-hmm. and then to to be feel guided to write a book like this, I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god, how?" And mm-hmm. and I would read books thinking, "How do they put all these stories and quotes in the right order?" Like. Mm-hmm. How, what do they have like an encyclopedia of stories in their pocket how do they Mm. and so I had all these questions and then I realized something deep which was you put effort and then you live life and Allah brings things for you Mm. for the journey Mm. see like in the Quran it says the best provision is God consciousness Mm -hmm. and if you think about a traveler traveling from one place to another which is us and they take provisions right you have water you have food the best provision is God consciousness. Yeah. And so there is this element like you, the best thing for you is to carry light, to amplify light, to generate light, to give light, to be in light, mm-hmm. to take in light. That's what the best thing for you is. So what I would say is I think a big starting point for me was realizing that faith begins with experience, not with obedience hmm. which sounds so crazy because people are like how could you say that la ilaha illallah muhammad mm-hmm. and what i'm saying is la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah right muhammad rasulullah it, the, the shahada it means witnessing right and it, and it refers to eyewitness and you're like what do you mean eyewitness like i wasn't la ilaha how and it refers all the way to when allah is like you know, in this idea that am I not your Lord, it says in the Quran, in this mm-hmm. realm be beyond this one where we were all souls of some sort. And God asked directly, am I not your Lord? And we all say, Bala, yes, mm-hmm. we testify. Mm-hmm. And so the shahada begins with an experience. It's mm-hmm. not a blind obedience. It begins with experience. But we've lost that connection. So we say, okay, someone feels this connection. Well, just go pray. We'll just go mm-hmm. this. Way. Instead of saying, Let's go experience God. Hmm. How do we experience? Let's go serve humanity. Yeah. Let's go be with the earth. Let's be with his creation. Let's see what he created. Let's feel what it feels like to be human, hmm. to give, to go to an orphanage, to build a house, to have these experiences. And then from that place, amplify the light that's already inside of you. And so I think a lot of times we like, yeah, it's funny because I wrote a write a book and I'm like, yep, don't read my book, just go outside. You know, like, <laughs> but like it is it's, it's this Quran that exists inside of you and in creation longs to be read also, mm. and we can't miss that. 
right? We can't, we, existence came about from God's speech. And, and, and you see that in the, you know, in the Bible and you see in the Quran. God said, be. Confi- be and they couldn't forget. Yeah. And there's this idea that speech created existence. So God's speech created everything you see, mm-hmm. you know? And so to be with the unbelievable, un, like incredible truth of that, call people to that because look, clarity comes from being in what is from God. And like confusion is in what turns you away from that. Mm-hmm. So instead of trying to figure out why you're confused and find clarity by reading, you know, oh, why why God exists versus the atheist because <laughs> what that does is it puts you in your mind. Yes. And but your heart, it's like your heart collect it contains the realities of existence, mm-hmm. and you're going to your mind to try to reason between words of people who also don't know usually, mm-hmm. and so. When, but when you go to your heart, you, like for me, for example, I, I was obsessed with debate watching. Literally, it was like my reality TV was to look up <laughs> debater versus atheist debater. Like that was my reality TV. <laughs> right? Like I loved it. Yeah. But I realized at the end of the day, like neither side, re- like they were so busy convincing each other <laughs> that they weren't able to just feel what it means to just like hold somebody's confusion. Mm. Right. That's a like good I, point. I have seen many and I also like those, but yes, that's a good point. You never get enough of them. You're always yeah. like, oh, I, if it's yes. clarity, why am I watching five more? You know? <laughs> true, okay. true. I have one question because you just touched upon how about atheism. It, can you suggest anything for those people who are uh, drifting away or uh, the youth especially in the west and the us uh anything that you can suggest I, i think first of all just with all the parents out there who are struggling with that i think it's a really hard trial and i think that it's a, it's, it's a hard test because you know you bring this human being into into, into this life and it's like you, you protect them and you want the best for them and and it's hard when they drift away from that which you know would be good for them um i think the biggest thing for me i think is to love them and it sounds wild but you know you have an example in the sunna right and it's a famous story we've heard a hundred times about the prophet peace be upon him and that woman throwing trash in front of his feet mm-hmm. yes, and yes, every day yes. she's throwing trash and one day she's not there mm-hmm. and he inquires about her mm-hmm. And he goes and visits her and she opens the door like, and they say she's sick. And so he, he's like, let me go see if she needs anything. Mm-hmm. Knocks on her door. She opens the door and, and she's like shocked to see him. And he's like, I heard you're sick. I just checking up on you, you know? Yeah. And she, she embraces faith, not because of five prayers, exactly. not because of it needs sense, not because, because it, because kindness hits the human kindness. heart. Love hits the human heart. It's yeah. a direct arrow into that into that target and we sometimes get so word heavy and trying to but be kind mm. if, if your child is struggling with something and living a life that you do not approve of mm. i don't mean ignore it mm. the issue i said be kind mm. bring them and say i love you mm. grab it. like there's this you know i've heard stories of girls getting into some hard times and their mom saying don't tell your dad he's gonna kill you I mean, yeah. that's yeah. not the approach yes so uh, yes i think uh, kindness and uh, to be open towards your children and your young uh, boys and girls i guess yeah, not to be it, too judgmental or to be like shutting them out i guess yeah exactly it's this like the best way i can say is i like create space yes, for them yes, yes. because yes. sometimes what happens is Um, you know, they would say like, don't give them too much rope or they'll hang themselves with it. Mm, and then it's mm. like, if it's too tight, then it's like a leash. Mm. And they have these, like, um, these, you know, metaphors and stuff. And what I'm saying is no, not rope. You give them space, not like space, physical space, like you're out of their yes. face. Yes, yes. I mean, the opportunity to 
like we don't go into a garden, right? Like I have a little garden, I have a little tree and some herbs. And I'm not like mad at the basil for growing the way it is and then the tree for growing another way. And I can't house them and be like, nope, you have to grow straight in this way because that's how I grew as a pine tree. But it's like I have a child and it's a lemon tree. And and so it's about being able to see. And I'm sure for those who have ch- different children, yes. they know oh, children yes. can raise the same way. Each child from the same home is different. Yeah, it's like it's like somehow it's like different fruits from the same tree, you yes, know? Yes, exactly. And so I think realizing that and saying, okay, you know, flowers grow at different speeds. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean that there's something wrong. And then the other thing is, you know, if another people say I use way too many farming um, metaphors, but here we go with another one. Uh, <laughs> this, this notion that, you know, when you have a plant and it's not growing well, I have never seen someone say, hmm, there's something wrong with the seed. They don't say that. Mm. They say, okay, you know what? My soil is really dry. Mm. Hmm, maybe I should move it from the shade to the sun. Huh, I think I overwatered it. Maybe the soil needs some nutrition. And But we don't treat children in that way. We yeah. say like, oh, he's just a bad seed or, yeah. or you're just so bad. Oh, something wrong with the parenting somehow. I mean, not or, always. Yeah. But. Yeah. And so we, we have this way of like, and you know, the thing that's so unreal and so cool about islam at least in my opinion is this idea of the fitra yes. this idea that you're innately good yes you're yes. not innately bad yes you're not this notion of born bad we don't have it's your you're yes. born good yes. Yes. and when you do tauba or repentance you return to that yes. which is good inside good, of yeah. you right so when you see a child and they're veering off you know they're into drugs or mm-hmm. you know they have Anything. these mm-hmm. whatever it is and it's you're like, oh, this kid's bad kid, and mm-hmm. oh, you're so bad. And we, we do, instead of saying, hmm, okay, you're you're struggling with something here. How can I make this environment more able for you to succeed in it? And I'm not saying sometimes, you know what? It's like an al khidr thing. Mm-hmm. They have to go through some stuff, and exactly. we can't do anything about it. Yeah. But every step of the way, instead of blaming yourself or them, don't do that. Because yeah. parents fall, I've seen, especially moms, they fall into a deep, deep, like, I could have done better. I didn't do enough. Mm-hmm. And mom judgment and they mm-hmm. need a break, but they feel bad about wanting that break because their kid's driving them crazy. Like they have all these emotions. Yes. That's true. Instead of saying, I'm human mm-hmm. and this kid needs some certain things and I need God's help. Mm-hmm. Like, I need help. I know yeah. if my mom was on this call, she'd probably tell you like however many years ago she prayed for me and I was going to her to an Islamic country and my visa got rejected and I got dropped off in Turkey. And she was like, oh, wow. so depressed mm. that I couldn't go because she wanted me in my like, you know, early 20s. She wanted me to be more religious and I wasn't. Mm. And she was like, I was so mad at God for like a year. I was like, God, why? Like, this was good. Like in her mind, it made uh, sense. I know, I know. And yet in Turkey is where I found in the book, I talk about this like spiritual experience that threw me into, um, into Islam in a deeper oh, way. Wow. So actually yeah, that part I, say, I never said the beginning in the book, which is I was meant for a different destination, yes. but Allah deterred me because he had different plans for, for me. You. Yes. And so I think sometimes it's like being able to keep the faith in the storm is hard, mm. but that's just our calling, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, and, and just like that last thing on sabr or patience, yes. because a lot of times we see patience you know, with our kids, whatever, as, as waiting for them to become what we want. And that's not patience. Patience is witnessing how mm. Allah is involved in every step along the way, yes. Yes. whether it manifests what we want mm. or it's in the highest for us that we're not even aware. So true. Good, good. Wow. Oh. Wonderful, wonderful. Anything else before we go to the last leg of questions? Uh, you have uh, any thoughts that are coming to you or anything you would like to mention uh, about the book that we don't know, just like the way you mentioned uh, just now about your experience in Turkey. Um, Well, I'll say like uh, a question I I often get is, um, you know, uh, how do I write a book or, um, you know, this, how long did it take you? And um, sort of questions like this. And I just wanted to say something brief about that is that, um, this book took me around three years. 
Okay. Um, but it wasn't the time that was important or it, it was the fact that in that period, God was working on me, you know, like I felt like I was being put into situations that would illuminate different topics and, and put into people's lives. Like he brought people in my life that helped me create this book. This is definitely not me doing it. Um, it's a big fleet of teachers, professors, you know, imams, sheikhs, guides of all sorts. Um, and so what I say that because for those who have a calling, like they feel like there's a book in them or maybe a, a art series, whatever it may be, a program is like, don't look at your current capability. Hmm. Look at what God can create with the smallest of efforts. Okay, like they say that the Big Bang, if if that is the way the reality started, began with the size of a P, P E A, a P, mm -hmm. and look what it created. <laughs> okay, so okay. It's a law with this two letters, essentially, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Kun, Kun. existence, yeah. like that is mm. small. Like a sperm mm. is really small. Yes. Like egg, yes. it created you. Yeah. So the smallest movement can be amplified. Mm -hmm. And in the Quran, it says, hey, you do one good, I give you up to 10 to 700 to infinite mm -hmm. multiplied. So don't feel like you don't know how and so you stop. You just start messy. <laughs> and the snowball comes, hopefully, behind you. Mm -hmm. And the avalanche falls. And, and a movement's created. Mm -hmm. But you, you just start messy that's like i mean think about noah i mean yeah noah he's like building a boat in the desert that's messy. <laughs> that's true <laughs> you know, 9 50 whatever it's like this long period of time hmm. it was very messy everyone's like what are you doing this is such a waste of time right hmm. and so people tend what a waste of time hmm. oh you could what a waste but it's like i'm building a boat in the desert it's okay. I, I trust that the water will come. Mm. You know, there is this Moses is running to the Red Sea. Like, why? <laughs> why are you running mm. into a wall? It's because I'm going to step in and God's going to do something great today. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's what, like, our tradition comes from this yes. rapid trust, you know? Mm. And so I just wanted to say that for anyone out there who's on that journey. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, what is wealth in your experience? Hmm. For me today, wealth is being with people who I can be with God with. Hmm. Nice. What is the value of gratitude in your life? Um, I feel like of all the kind of qualities Gratitude has been the one that allowed me to be most human and and to be aware that my life here is short and that through seeing all that God continuously does for me, um, through me, because of his love, like has allowed me to receive more of that which already is and and been able to just like look at my father when I see him and put my head on his chest and hear his heartbeat and know that every single beat, like Allah decided for it to be there. And that one day, like it will be time for that clock to stop ticking. And, but to know like what a gift to hear this music in this moment. And, and just the, the amazing brief spark of light that we are like in this grand universe but that somehow it still matters and for me that's that's been gratitude very nice beautiful um what is the value of time hmm whoa um it's interesting because uh you know einstein i say this sort of in a in the chapter in the book too but is a theory of relativity talks about time and light and how in a light beam time is is present it's eternal there's 
there's an eternal present moment mm-hmm. when you're with the light and time expands in a way that can't be described. And so I, I feel like time has always been this really weird relationship of trying to accomplish the things I want before the clock runs out. And then also having experiences where I'm, I feel like in the presence of God's light, which is available for everyone, but just being aware of it. And suddenly it's like everything slows down and everything becomes exactly, exactly where it's meant to be. And there's no mistake. And suddenly it's like, there is a, every leaf on the floor, like was literally written to be in that way. It looks like chaos to me in space, but time had a, had a purpose for it. And, 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 and then just this notion that time is not linear in God's eyes, Hmm. that he can give us something today for something we'll do tomorrow. That in his eyes, it's like the blessings aren't the way that we, we imagine them. And, um, and just being aware of that, being aware that we, we may be stuck in time, but our spirits have this way of, of traveling in a way beyond us. And, and, and to remember that when we're like confronted with with the shortness of our physical life on earth. Nice. What completes your life? Hmm. For me, that changes. Um, And what it changes from, it tends to be different qualities of God. So in this season of my life, it would probably be Musawwar, which mm. is the one who creates from nothing. Mm. And so for me, when I'm in a state of, obviously, we can never create from nothing. But yeah. when I take an empty page or, you know, a canvas or whatever it is, clay, and, and, and create something and just aware of it, the ability to create and the ability to speak or write, it comes from a law. And being in that presence of that quality, like these days, very much completes me. Hmm. Nice. So is there um, gender associated with God? We know that in Islam and in the Quran, in the chapter uh, 112, the unity, Surah Ikhlas, Uh, the definition of uh, Allah is very clear. So for those who do not understand the definition from the Islamic perspective, what can you say about that? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, in in Arabic, um, God refers to himself, like when he doesn't use his name, as Hua, which is he. Yeah. But a lot of times what we don't realize in translations in English is because in English we're stuck. He yes. or she. Exactly. Right? Exactly. But in, in Arabic, we, the he is inclusive yes. of feminine and, and masculine, kind of similar exactly. to how you have it in, in, you know, for those who speak Spanish, ellos. You, yeah. you, when yeah. you have men and women, it's ellos. Yeah. yeah, you put them together and it's under the masculine. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, like that in French also. Okay. I, so, I yeah, so, so, yeah, you have some, a lot of the romantic languages yes. tend to have that. And, um, so yeah, we don't have it in mm. Arabic, so then Allah is referring to Islam as he, but it, in this oh, way, yes. Arabic is inclusive. So we kind of don't have that issue with in gender yes. as far as okay. in Arabic, okay. but yeah, I understand in the translation, in the, interpretation mm. of it, mm. you kind of run that problem. Mm. Um, and so even in, in, the, in the Quran, Allah refers to himself as we, and that's another thing too, is it's denoted as the royal we, which mm-hmm. is... What kings use when they say, like, we have decreed an order, but he's referring to himself, right? Mm-hmm. And so you'll see that in language. It's just the linguistic yes. style to yes. denote the level of power. I think I remember you talking about all this. In, in the book, book, yeah. Yes. So, yes. so just to, for the back yeah. story for some of the people who may be listening, so yes. that's like as far as words. But then when you look at it, it's interesting because human beings were made of form, right? And we're in space and time. And our minds are also made of form. And everything we understand is by association. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, I, I, I know pleasure because I know pain. Mm-hmm. You know, I know um, 
you know, joy, because I know sadness. And you, everything we, everything, for example, is the sun bright? Or is it your eyes that are able to capture light mm. and makes it? Is the concrete hard or is your feet just soft in comparison? <laughs> right? So we, we start to see reality is relationship. Reality is association. And so as human beings, we want to understand. We want to know God. We want. So we have lived a life of wanting to put him into a form. Right, put God into this form because it, we want to be able to have a relationship. We want to be able to have an interaction, and everything else is in forms. At least we through association. But here is interesting: is because the Quran comes and says, "Oh, God is unlike anything in existence." Mm-hmm. Oh, what do you mean? You know, like is the devil opposite of God? Nope. Mm-hmm. And so, what do you mean? Like, it, how could he not? And mm-hmm. we start. To it's tailspin because it doesn't make sense to us. But that's exactly where the divine wants us. Hmm. How can a finite being understand an infinite reality hmm. if it's not through being in the experience of bewilderment and paradox and gaining something that can't be spoken in words, can't be understood with the mind, but is experienced? Hmm. And so, and in the book, I also say this, this but I'll share it with the um with your listeners is this notion that, you know, somebody comes and says, I want to see God. And, and, you know, the mystic says, he's like, okay, look at the sun. And he's like, but I can't see it. It hurts my eyes. And he's like, you want to see the one who created the sun and you can't stare at the sun. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, fine. Then tell me where God lives. And he's like, do you know where you are? Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, I'm on earth. No, in the universe. Do you even know where the earth is right now? Do you even know where we are in the universe? Do you even know what's happening? where you are, like the space is changing. You don't even know where you are. How can you pin down where the one who created space resides? Yeah. And so we have, like, it's a very, I love it. It's very intellectual. It's, it's confronting the question, not from a place of finally believe, but use your intellect to realize you can't use your intellect. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that, Alhamdulillah. And love it. The, the, the founder of quantum physics, and I says again in the God chapter, it's like, he says that he says, he's like, you know, um, you become an atheist from the first sip of natural sciences, right? But he's like, but God is waiting for you at the bottom of yeah. the block. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I read that. At the end of all you know, yeah. you're like, oh, I got nothing. Yep. Yep. And that's where you're, and what that really means is when you're humble, like, wow. Like, mm. that, that the notion that God is beyond everything and yet so intimate with, at the same time, that mm. paradox, mm. he's closer to you than your jugular vein. Mm-hmm. He's unlike anything in existence. Yeah. That combination mm. that he's closer to you than the life that makes you alive mm. and more beyond you than anything your mind can like comprehend, mm. that paradox puts you in a perfect position to <laughs> contemplate. It's like a zen, you know, they say Zen koan. Mm. Zen koan is something like... um what did your face look like before your parents met? It kind of like struggles your brain. Squeezes, mm. You know, so this is, that's what that is. It's a Zen koan. It keeps you in a paradox mm. to help you go beyond the limitations of the mind. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. All right. What is the purpose of your life? Hmm. Um, it's my love. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my purpose more than ever has been to continue knowing God. I know it sounds mm-hmm. so broad and mm-hmm. and it's not this like glorious five-year plan or, but it's just like <laughs> this idea that, that, that I feel like this adventure mm-hmm. um, in knowing in experiencing in discovering the influences of God in my life, how he reflects himself in existence, in you, in your listeners, in everything that I see with my eyes or hear with my ears, and how he speaks in every moment, and being able to like receive that and 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 be grateful for it and to deepen my relationship with him. As the mystics say, the, the, the journey to God um, has two steps, begin and continue. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. 
very nice. All right. So what would you do today differently if you knew there wasn't any tomorrow? Hmm. I would I would probably just uh call my family, all the people I love, my loves and and I would just spend time with them and 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 appreciate them in a prayerful way. Hmm. Um, because I feel like I, I would definitely pray and have that connection with Allah, but also just to really take in his blessings, which is those I love, and then to be present with them hmm. and, and in that relationship. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like it feels like to imprint and to take from that relationship. Um, hmm. And, um, yeah, um, I would, I would, uh, I would probably write a few letters as well. And, um, I'd, uh, <laughs> I would give any money I had left, you know, <laughs> 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 some trees in paradise, take it all, take it all. <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, before I ask the last question, I would like my listeners to know that um, Halwa did not uh, get any of these questions ahead of time. And uh, it was a spontaneous, uh, beautiful, very engaging interview, uh, conversation, I should say, with you. So. Thank you so much for the time. And I loved your questions. They were very deep. It keeps me in a It'll give me something to sit with for today. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. So my last question is, what lights you up, Halwa? Hmm. What lights me up uh, these days has been inspiration. Hmm. And what I mean with inspiration is, to be in spirit, to be in the spirit and to be like willing to receive whatever really feels like an alignment hmm. and to create from that place. And that's been like one of the things that's really allowed me to, I don't know, deepen my practice in a, in a way um, with my relationship with Allah, like I said, through that quality, Musawwir. Mm -hmm. But also, because of this book, I've recently um, joined an artist collective, and it's given me an opportunity to like bring Islamic teachings to you know a couple hundred people who are from all different traditions, and it really lights me up to say like Islam is my faith, and I have no inclination to make you Muslim. Uh, I just know that I've learned so much from Christianity. I've learned so much from Judaism. I've learned so much from Zen, Taoism, and I feel like this will give you a lot. The poetry, the stories, teachings, and that you could take on your journey, whether it's in this faith or in another one. And it's been so rewarding to see that bridge building. Um, it just makes me really happy. One of the reasons I wrote this book was that you could hand it to anybody in any faith, mm -hmm. and they might say, I disagree with some of these beliefs, but... From my experience so far, they won't say I feel offended. Ah, uh, but uh, it's it is a good book for anybody to read. It's it's accessible. All right, um, I really appreciate. It. Thank you so much for uh, today. Thank you so much for having me on and uh, for your wonderful questions. And um, I'm just like deeply praying for your community and for the for the parents out there listening and. Um, for the kids, even also who may be listening, that I'm praying for you guys. I know times are in a weird place, but I know that God is with every single one of you in a special and sincere and unique way. And I'm praying that that light is amplified in all of your lives. In God's name, I pray. Amen. <laughs>